Well, guys, if the party story hasn't completely crushed the narrative, then surely this one here should do it. But one thing I find funny about it is that me and others covered this government memo the article talks about back in early 2020, just after the first lockdown, which said they would actually do all this. Now, the media might be focused on bringing down Boris Johnson with the party story that has had his wife implicated now, so might actually work, but really it's this, among everything else, over the past two years that is more egregious and should actually take the corrupt media down with it. Because while the government is in the firing line when it comes to this article talking about it, we all know the media itself is just as guilty as the government is. Not only have they profited from the propaganda, they have enthusiastically taken part in it every step of the way and in fact covered it up when the narrative hit a roadblock, let's not forget. So, like I said, as guilty as anyone in my mind, but today they're actually talking about a group of psychologists who wrote to the Public Administration and Constitutional Affairs Committee. They are warning that a team of unelected civil servants abused unethical means to coerce the public into compliance. This is obviously good news that is being called out, but I have to say it's about 21 months later than it should have been since the government put out documentation showing the sort of coercion planned and the outcomes of it in March 2020, like I said. In fact, I made a video on it just after the lockdown started because in April 2020, people online started talking about all this. Of course, the mainstream media at the time was loving the taxpayer-funded advertising spree the government went on, so was never going to call it out, even if they wasn't neck deep in the bullshit with them. And here you have the government's own document showing their plan to increase the sense of personal threat to coerce compliance with their plans that the media knew about, let's be honest. It's titled 25 Options for Increasing Adherence to Social Distancing Measures and shows how these scumbags brainwash the public with fear, scapegoating and emotional blackmail. Obviously, like I said, it also involves the media and references them multiple times, but the main bit really is this. It's subtitled Persuasion, Perceived Threat. A substantial number of people still do not feel sufficiently personally threatened. It could be that they are reassured by the low death rate in their demographic group, although levels of concern may be rising. Having a good understanding of the risks has been found to be positively associated with the adoption of social distancing measures in Hong Kong. The perceived level of personal threat needs to be increased among those who are complacent, using hard-hitting emotional messaging. To be effective, this must also empower people to make clear that there are actions they can take to reduce the threat. So, like I said, this information has been there since March 2020 and is damning beyond any stupid party story in my mind. It shows the government willingly terrorising its citizens to make them comply with the agenda they was planning to push. This is something we all knew, like I said. But this shit here is like the foundations of all that they have done, not only during the first lockdown, but during the following ones and even now. In fact, the psychologists in the letter to Parliament actually rightly compare this with China because that's where they've copied this shit from. Here it states the signatory said it was highly questionable whether a civilised society should knowingly increase the emotional discomfort of its citizens as a means of gaining their compliance. Of course, no it should not, it's abhorrent and should see all involved arrested in my mind at the very least. But it goes on, government scientists deploying fear, shame and scapegoating to change minds is an ethically dubious practice that in some respects resembles the tactics used by totalitarian regimes such as China, where the state inflicts pain on a subset of its population in the attempt to eliminate beliefs and behaviour they perceive to be deviant. That, I have to say, is a perfect summing up. It's literally what the government have done here without being as blatant about it as others have. And here you have a table of their planned actions and the outcomes of them. You will see increasing personal threat, using the media to vilify people and all sorts of shit that just shows how they plan to brainwash the sheep. It's bloody incredible, or would be, had we had not lived through the last two years of this shit show and the lunacy these deranged idiots have spouted through much of that that the public actually believed. Now for me personally, I want to know all involved with this shit show so they can be held to account for their actions. I'm sure you lot feel the same. Where are 